Good evening, Arizona. Hello. This is the South Tucson Youth Football Selection Show here at uh, here on uh, on the channel. I'm Brian. That's RJ. We are here to tell you Hello. it is it is it is bracket time. We are breaking down the bracket. That's what it's going to look like in just a second. There you see it. That is our beautiful yeah, bracket. There. We're going to be filling in some of those numbers with teams. And yeah, don't uh, ask well, us how the math. No, we're we're not sure, but we've uh, we've, it's gonna be it's gonna be a, it's it's been a great season. We've had a lot of a lot of intrigue, a lot of excitement, and uh, you know it's I think it's gonna be I think it's gonna be a really great um, a really great playoff. Uh, so I think we should probably get things started. We've uh, we've got the uh, we've got to the remainder of the half hour to kind of get you through these teams, talk about them, get some predictions in for you, uh, get your insight if you have any. And uh, you know, get hyped for for this weekend where we where we kick off the first uh, the first four games, the first round of the tournament. Uh, we're gonna start things off first of all by just kind of going through, uh, letting you know how this is all gonna work. There you see it. It's a 12-team field. Uh, we already know the identities of six of the teams. They are the conference champions. They won during championship week. We're not gonna go through them now. You're gonna see them eventually. Uh, along with six teams that were selected as at-large bids by the South Tucson Youth Football Playoff Committee. Uh, they're seeded 1 through 12. The top four seeds receive first-round buys. The higher seed is the host for all the games. So, of course, all these games will be played in South Tucson. And we introduced a new thing this year, the Alert Bunker. The South Tucson Youth Football Playoff Committee sequestered here after Championship Week until they have selected their 12 teams. And again, you know, it's it's a huge bunk. It's it's a bunker that is uh, that it, that just allows them to get their job done. There's no food, no water, no access to loved ones, no access to the outside world, no indoor plumbing, of course, and hourly air horns along with a blinding white light that helps focus, avoid sleep, and and that's how it's gonna work. They are just basically kept in this. Uh, they're basically kept in the alert bunker. Uh, and they have been let out once they have in, once they have we quiet him down in the back, please. Once he no, has been no, uh, no, no, not the bus. We, we we've already let them out. I guess they're just they're they're dealing with a little bit of um they're dealing with a little bit of uh what's what's it called uh, PTSD I think, um but I'm sure that's fine. Uh but yeah we'll get to them and of course we have uh, we'll we'll have uh some representatives from the committee. Uh, or at least one that will be willing to talk to us later after we reveal the bracket. We'll get some insight on what they decided when they made their picks. Uh, but uh, RJ, I think it's gonna. I think it's time. We, we should. We should get right going. We should get going with this, shouldn't we? Right. All Let's right. Well, we are going to tell right. you we got who the all. overall number one seed is. It's Rancho Robusto Plus Size oh. Warehouse coming out of the Big Small Business Conference. They're the champions. Five-game winning streak. They beat Casa de Gordoso in that championship game. Very big, big win there. This is their first time ranked number one overall all season. And they dethroned the number two seed, the Wandering Lush Irish Pub. That's right, the champions out of the Foreign Legion. This is their second straight Foreign Legion title. Big, big season for them. They're getting a first round bye as well. They took out Kebab Barkers to win the automatic bid. The number three seed is the Binging Texan Barbecue Buffet coming out of the Gluttony League. They are they are making their second playoff appearance. They are the first at-large bid that we've uh, we've announced so far, and uh, they they showed a very strong a very strong uh, showing. And the fourth seed is, in fact, the champions of that conference, Kathy's Country Cooking, the Gluttony League champions. The second time they're in the playoffs, second time they have a first round bye, and they showed that they had a very strong season as well. So there we have it. There are our four, top four teams. We're going to go ahead and. Uh... Oh, there we go. Did that not work? Oh. Uh, yeah, of we course go. that didn't work. Uh, let's oh. go ahead and, uh, yeah, so there we go. There we go. There we have our top four teams. Uh, any thoughts so far, oh, RJ? It looks like it's pretty good. Goodness. Oh, man. I tell you what. Um, you just look at those uh, 
You look at those feet on the Rancho Robusto. You just know, yeah, oh, yeah they're ready. Rest they- Ryan will be proud of that. Um, I am, goodness, what a what a great league. What a good division, the Gluttony League. You get three teams in the top four. and uh, Two. Two. Two, yes. Two, uh, yeah. Binging Texan and Kathy's Country Cooking. Rancho Robusto, of course, in the uh, we can do math. business. Wandering Lush out of the Foreign Legion. No, that's fine. That's fine. No, that, but again, yeah, two two teams out of the uh, out of the Gluttony League. I think last year they had four teams overall. So uh, again, showing how strong of a of a conference they are, huh? Oh goodness, yeah. Um, and you know, it, it's funny because you kind of feel like maybe it, it's it's strange that you have the uh, the runner up team in the in the division, the conference. Uh, uh, but they're the, they're the lower seed. They're the lower seed compared to the runner-up. The you champions know, they, are. Yeah, I, I would have to agree with you. They're, uh, I'm looking kind of at the, the stats they give us. I mean, you know, we're looking at an RPI of two versus four. Uh, Binging Texan actually lost to Kathy's Country Cooking. But, uh, you know, th- that that division, both teams five and two in division, both only three losses. I mean, two elite teams. And maybe they, you know, if they have to, if they have to settle it out on the field, it would be in the finals based on how the bracket is looking. Um, I think we need to start figuring out who some of our other teams are. What do you say? Absolutely right. There were eight, eight teams waiting. There are only eight spots. Many teams are waiting to see. You know, their fans have put themselves in their own alert bunkers. Yes. Yeah, be of... the, they've been starving. Um, yep. Not because we have subjected them to any torture, but because... But because they don't take care of they themselves. Just, they just, yeah, they don't really take care of themselves whatsoever, like, in any way. Um, I, I really think uh, I, I really think that we're going to be seeing, uh, that, you know, that there's not many teams uh, that, that, that know that they have a shot at this. But I think of the ones there, I mean, there's going to be, there's always, there's always bubbles being burst in this, uh, at this time of year. So it's just a matter of finding out. Who will it be? I think uh, I think it's uh, I think it's about that time. What do you say? It's that time. We break let's start hearts? breaking. Yeah, let's uh, let's announce the eight teams. We'll yeah, we're gonna, we're gonna do it a little bit. We're gonna do, we're gonna do it slowly but surely. Uh, we're gonna uh, start off start off uh, looking over at that bottom left. The, uh, we're gonna take a look at the left side of the bracket first. We're gonna announce the first these four teams. Talk about the number eight seed, Holy Balls, the champions Holy out of the American Ball. Freedoms Conference. Another championship for them. Three conference titles out of the four years that we've this has been in existence. They have been a, a minor dynasty out of a smaller conference. And they've got an eight seed in a home game against the nine seed Moist Adventures Indoor Water Park, an at-large bid out of the CSC, the Child Services Conference. They have uh, they've been playing them close. Five out of their seven wins were only by a field goal, and even one of their three losses, seven and three on the year, were by a field goal. So they're gonna they know how to handle these games. Uh, pretty uh, they know how to handle these games when they get close. And uh, I think they're going to give Holy Balls a really tough game. We're going to keep moving. That's going to be a good things. one. Oh yeah, no doubt about that. Our number five seed. We're going to keep things going. Extreme Dentistry, another at-large bid. This time Extreme. coming out of the Big Small Business Conference, their first ever playoff spot, and they are uh, they are going to have a good one there. They are going to be taking on Big Pauls. Mexicanless car wash, the number 12 seed overall, and they are the champions out of the BCC. So that'll be an interesting one with Greg McMuffin uh, lining up under center. They are going to be a force to be reckoned with. They are, of course, Greg. they are, of course, uh, former semifinalists in uh, in the playoffs before. And we're looking at the left side of that bracket. Uh, those two really interesting matchups, RJ. I think Holy Balls versus Moist Adventures. Extreme Dentistry versus Big Pauls, and, and you see those second round opponents waiting for them. It's gonna be some interesting oh. pairings. Yeah, you kind of get the feeling like uh, you know, Catherine's Country Cooking and uh, Big Pauls, they're just kind of made for each other. And I can't put my finger on it, but you know, I think they would just be happy to be playing one another. 
Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised if I wouldn't be surprised about that myself. I'm not gonna lie. Um, and I think Big Paul's. You know, the BCC definitely had a down year. We've talked about that throughout the season. But um, you know, they they still they got their win. They're riding a four game winning streak that includes the championship over Taxes Roadhouse. They've beaten some tough teams on the way there. They got a win over Twin Towers as well. Again, Taxes Roadhouse were a tough team. Um, so they've got the they've got the resume there. Um, obviously, they have the auto bid, but Extreme Dentistry as well. Extreme Dentistry are just uh, uh, just found a new gear this year, and the Big Small Business Conference I think is kind of poised to be a, a strong division, a strong conference. They're, they're certainly on the up. Uh, and Extreme Dentistry, you know, this being their yeah. best campaign to date, you know, they've always been a team that's had potential to succeed. And, well, here they are. They're certainly yeah. meaning and exceeding a lot of expectations that were put in front of them before the start of the season. Man, there, there were a lot of uh, seven-win teams that we had to build for through. For yeah, this. well, that's kind of the logjam, isn't it? I mean, our, our, top two, our top two seeds, nine and two, got a handful of teams with eight wins. It's it's a lot of teams that are seven and three, eight and three, um, and then you got you know you, it kind of just really falls off after six and four. We kind of said you know three, uh, seven wins, got you a shot at it, but it didn't guarantee you nothing. I mean, thankfully a lot, for for the teams on the bubble, the bubble didn't burst too, the bubble didn't shrink all that much. I think all the teams that could have uh, shrunk the bubble uh, didn't. You know, we had like wandering lush. Uh, winning as they were supposed to in their conference championship. Um, you know, Kathy's Country Cooking doing the same. Um, you know, Moist Adventures in an at-large bid. That's that that's a testament to the fact that the CSC, statistically, the best conference this year. And we, haven't even, seen, and we haven't even seen their champion yet. I'm kind of just doing some counting. Uh, I think we're missing one more conference champion, so we got three more at-large bids to reveal. But uh, oh. yeah, it's a, it's a testament to how good the CSC was this year. I think they were they were exceptional, and of course, you ca you can't do much better um, in a youth football league than uh, being around children at all times. Yeah, that's just what I feel. Well, I think uh, I think it's time to uh, we've we looked at that. Um, you know, I'm looking at those. I'll, 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 we'll, we'll get the predictions at the end. Um, but you know, I want to start planting the idea in your head of any of these teams on the bottom row, any of these teams that have to play in the first round. Do they have a chance of making it to the semifinals? Or are we going to start seeing chalk? But first, I think I think we should reveal the full bracket before we do that. What do you say? Yeah, let's. Uh, we've uh, we got four more teams. We know one of them, and then there's three at large bids. But there's a yep. whole lot of teams in South yep. Tucson. Here we go. This is the rest of the first round matchups. In the right side of the bracket, the seven seed, the Mulch Hut, an at-large team coming out of the Big Small Business Conference, a third team out of the BSB. Their first winning season in team history. They were the last undefeated team in the season after going 5-0 and and then uh, losing in Week 6. They have a strong team. They made a strong case. They're taking on number 10 seed, Diddler's Family Restaurant. There's another oh. at-large bid. They had a great season as well. They were ranked number one in the league through week eight, and they have been rewarded by their high RPI, their high strength of schedule, and a six and four, a six and four, uh, a six and four record. So you know that's, I gotta say, it's a little surprising. Um, that's to me. That's the. I think that's the first. Uh, that's an at large with a six and four, and we oh. are seeing it right there. Yeah, there was there was going to be some debate over uh, over you know some some seven win teams. You know yeah. the, the argument was they had a better record, but maybe their schedule wasn't as strong as some six win teams. Yeah, should we get in. I'm just saying, shut the fuck up. We're gonna get some great games out of this. Yeah, Mulchot and Diddlers actually, you got kind of a little story there in that in uh, in in that uh, you know you had the team that was ranked number one taking on a team that at the time was making a case that they should be number one because they were the only undefeated team left. Um, man, if I'm wandering lush, I'm not liking that matchup because if either of those teams find their form again, you know, that's, that's a dangerous <laughs> second round game. <laughs> All right. Well, let's, uh, let's continue things on. Let's, let's move things on. Uh, one we've more got match. One more matchup to mention. 
the binging Texan awaits the winner of this matchup between the six seed Crash Zone Trampoline Experience, the champions out of the CSC, the Child Services Conference. Slow start, but they came out strong and they defeated 1 800 Biodad in overtime. That thrilling overtime win in the CSC Championship game. They take on the 11 seed Septic Tanks for Jesus, a second bid. And a first at-large bid for the AFC. Their first appearance in the South Tucson Youth Football Playoffs. 7-3. and three, A team that we didn't really talk about too much during this uh, during this season. But they were first just kind of ever-present. They had never oh, been goodness. ranked all season. But uh, the committee saw their body of work. They, they liked what they saw. And now we have the full bracket. We're going to show it up for you for a second. We're going to go ahead and just give you some statistics first before we get back to that. Uh, we'll, we'll talk about the bracket in just a second. But first, let's go ahead and talk about the conference breakdown. As uh, It's all about the numbers here. First things first, the conference breakdown, and there you see it right there. Uh, three bids for the Gluttony League, three bids for the BSB, and uh, another at-large bid for the AFC and also for the CSC. So uh, a bit surprising that we got another a, a second team out of the uh, AFC, which were statistically the worst conference. But, you know, I guess the top were really strong and the bottom were, were really weak. Um, good distribution this year, I think. Very good distribution. Of course, Gluttony League, because, uh, because fat, you got to finish your you got to finish your tackles. Yep, finish uh, your tackle and finish your plate, and they can do that. Uh, and, no teams, no no conferences with four four teams this year. Um, I think that just kind of shows that we didn't have one super dominant conference. Oh um, no, which is which is good. We kind of want to see that kind of parity in South Tucson. You know, we want to see the the uh, a bunch of the conferences kind of you know take their turns and, and and have a good shot at it. And of course, this is the unfortunate thing. Let's talk about some of the teams who had their bubble burst. These are the teams that a lot of people were calling as potential playoff teams. Oh. <laughs> Looking at some of them like Casa de Gordoso hacking jeans. Good records. Twin and they lost history. their championship game. So that's the committee saying that they needed to win that game uh, to get in. Uh, now, are you sure it was them saying that they need to win that game? Or I, I need some water, please. My internal organs feel like they're about to shrivel up and and cave in on each other. Well, that's going to be the question we can ask in a bit. Plus, we have teams like Twin Towers Construction. Again, a weak BCC year. Um, you know, so 7-3 and three didn't look nearly as impressive. Abigail Mays Aggressive Steakhouse, I think just a bit of a logjam in the Gluttony League. They didn't do enough to really show themselves. And nothing but Borscht, you know, kind of fell off. Didn't Couldn't win when they needed to. 7-3 uh, and three looked good, but the Foreign Legion... Yeah, you know, they didn't. They didn't have enough in that. So that is. Those are our teams. We're gonna go ahead and take a look at the bracket. So again, apologies to those teams. Better luck next year. And RJ, let's take a quick second to kind of uh, to kind of break down this bracket. Um, I'm gonna ask you straight up there, which which first round matchup looks the, looks the most intriguing to you? Oh my god, I'm telling you. I think uh, I think we're in for a uh, I think we're in for a good one. Uh, I like uh, I like that that big Paul's at stream dentistry matchup. The winner taking on Kathy's country cook, and I think that has the potential, you know, for, for upsets. Um, and I'm also looking towards uh, I'm also looking towards Holly Balls and Moist Adventures. I feel like that left side of the bracket it's it's a tough one. Really no, strong. no disrespect. Yeah, but that. No doubt. Yeah. Well, that'll, that'll, that'll out be of the interesting bracket. to see. Yeah, I think uh, now when you're saying it has an upset potential, are you are you saying that you're thinking Big Pauls can can get out of the first round? Are you saying that e any of these teams on the whoever on the first round can beat those seeded teams in the uh, whoever could round? win that whoever can win that matchup? I feel has got a decent enough chance to win that second round matchup. But of course, you could say the same for Crash Zone Trampoline Experience versus Septic Tanks versus Jesus. The winner of that has the potential to knock out the Benching Tets in advance. Yeah to the semi yeah that's the thing you know i think i think we saw like there's there's there was definitely a line between the really good teams and kind of the rest of the pack 
But the thing is, we kind of drew that. That line kind of got drawn at around like 16 or so teams. So yeah, we got a couple of teams that had to miss out. But there's only like, there's I think a negligible difference between a lot of these teams that are in the top four and some of the ones that are in the that are in the, the 5 through 12 spots. So, okay, I'm going to go ahead Man. and put you on the spot there. You got to pick one. Of, if, if there is, which first round team has the best chance to make it to the semifinals? I think... Crash zone trampling experience as the number six seed in a tough conference. I think I think they have the potential. I think they have the uh, the schemes, or at least the uh, the willpower to hurt more people than anybody else. Hurt more children. Yeah, and that could carry them all the way to the top. Yeah, that's but the thing. They yeah, they, 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 that us that I mean the champions of they're the champions of the statistically best conference. You know you can't write them out. Uh, only one conference loss. Um, second best schedule third best rpi i mean the numbers just really stack up we'd be talking a lot more about them if they didn't go zero and three to start the season but you know i'm looking at the teams all three of their non-conference games are against teams in this tournament right now diddlers kathy's and holy balls like that's that's as good of a schedule as you can set up just took them a couple of weeks to figure out their mojo, and then when they got right into the CSC play, they went, they won seven of eight games. <laughs> now, your football is dumb like that sometimes, and we love that's a, it. That's a dangerous team. You know, I'm gonna go ahead and say, of the teams that I think might be uh, a danger to someone in the second round, man, I'm looking at, I'm looking at Moist Adventures. I'm looking at the CSC as well. Um, you know, I think. I think Rancho Robusto are a really good side, but Moist Adventures, they've got that they've got they've got just a really good team. They're riding a four game winning streak. They hit a little bit of a of a of a stumble they sure are. middle of the middle of the uh middle of the season, but I think they're coming on really strong. And I think they might squirt past holy balls and they oh, can they easily just past. they could just easily the dam can break and the flood can just go right through to the semifinals for them absolutely yeah uh plus i don't think extreme i think extreme dentistry I, i'm looking at extreme dentistry that's a team that i don't think has gotten enough respect i think their losses their three losses in the season have been spread out enough that they hadn't been able to make a real good charge up the rankings the five seed i think is a perfect spot for them i think the kids are excited I think they're, this is their first time, I think, having a winning season. So they're in the playoffs as well. That's just that's just even bigger of a bonus. Um, RJ, I think we uh, – is he, is he – can we kind of like slap him into consciousness? He's, he looks pretty He looks pretty rough, but uh, there's a guy kind of sitting in a in one of those, uh, one okay. of those chairs over there. I'll, oh, yeah. Um, uh, oh, jeez. Oh, yeah. You want to uh, go ahead buddy. and uh, give the introduction he, to him? Uh, uh, oh. Oh, hi, uh, uh, this is a, uh, 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 oh, sorry. Uh, oh, man. Oh, boy. Uh, I've been so tired. You know, I, I, I didn't realize I had left pizza outside. Oh, uh, golly. There, there were some in the break room. I don't get it. All right. Uh, well, uh, this is, uh, this, of course, is a member of the South Tucson Youth Football Playoff Committee, uh, Mr. Braden Tisdell. Thank you for joining us. Uh, I know it's been a, 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 lo a lengthy stay in the alert bunker, um, but I, I got to say, first off, uh, thank you and a commendable job at picking the playoff this year. Oh, 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 man. This was a, this was real tough, um, obviously, because uh, I, I can't count past uh, about nine or ten good, but... Uh, we looked at the matchups, and, uh, and we figured that, uh, that Rancho Robusto had the most suckable toes um, of any uh -huh. team in the conference, and, and that's why we put them at the number one spot. Great. Uh, they, uh, they, they completely uh, – they, they just stepped all over their opponents. Uh, they were just so large and loose-fitting. Very roomy, uh, a, a roomy, a roomy sort of team, uh -huh. um, and they they uh, they really impressed. Um, you know, we had a we had a lot of uh, we had a lot of talk and a lot of carrying on, and mostly a lot 
out of uh, dying from atrophy in these uh in these alert bunkers. But uh, I think we we're pretty proud of the of the bracket that we came up. Yeah, I think I think the fact that you guys took that long to deliberate really shows just how tough this decision is and how difficult a job. I, I imagine um, the air horns every hour to keep you guys awake and alert. Um, hopefully, it didn't cause too much distraction. Uh, the lack of food, the lack of water. I'm sure it was just a motivating factor. Uh, I got I got to ask what. Um, what were some of the mo what were some of the most important things that that you guys thought about when picking these at large teams? Because you know there's always there's always going to be controversy. There's always going to be teams that are left out that people are saying, oh, they're they're you know they're a good team. Uh, why didn't they make it in? What what did it come down to? It came down to a lot of things. Uh, we looked at the uh, the strength of schedule. We looked at the uh, the strength of conference. We looked at their RPI. We looked at uh, we were particularly fond of how much momentum, um, you know, if you tend to finish on a good note, you tend to finish strong, it's easier to bounce back than if you, uh, if you start strong and then don't finish out so well. Uh, we also looked at many other things like the, uh, like the eternal specter of death that looms above all, just like it loomed over daddy. Well, that's, uh. That's 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 very introspective, of course. That's uh, that's, a, that's a very heavy, uh, heavy, heavy, uh, heavy load you and the rest of the committee bear, and uh, no doubt uh, a, a, a job well done. I have to ask, uh, you know, from the perspective of of a fan, are there any of these matchups that you really are that that you were excited about that? That, that that you know after you guys made the bracket and said okay this is this is what works we've avoided any conflicts we got all the best teams in there we've ranked them pretty closely um is there any matchups that you looked at and said man man this is going to be a good one we did we did good well if one just assumes it's a formality that the number one two seeds meet up in the finals uh i think there's a lot of interest in a uh, in a rancho Move so and uh, wandering lush uh, uh, matchup. Which, by the way, I've I've walked into a into a pub in a uh, in oversized clothes, mm -hmm. uh, oversized clothes that friends lent me after I'd gotten food poisoning from crabs at a uh, at the at a great little old uh, I believe it was Abigail May's that had these uh, fresh crab legs and I managed to defecate myself. From the food poisoning, mm -hmm. uh, but that's but that's the thing. Much like food poisoning, and much like the white water raft of defecation that comes with it, your spot for choice. You have so much good football out of this bracket. We feel uh -huh. like we pick the best teams possible. Oh. Holy, that just reminds me. I've even evacuated myself. I was, I didn't want to bring it up. Uh, I figured you'd notice that. Um, goodness. Well, Braden, uh, you know, oh, uh, that's you're, you're, you're just. It's just kind of happening. Um, we should probably get you rehydrated. Uh, can we just get some final thoughts from you on, on, uh, on, on the selection process, on the bracket, on whatever? Any other final thoughts that you wanted to get out there uh, before everything else kind of gets well, out of you? Well, well, I encourage, uh, I encourage everybody to uh, to go to the games here. We got a great, we got a great little town south of Tucson. We got great football culture and got great kids, and, mm -hmm. and we think, and for a lot of kids, this may be their very last football games. Uh, some kids who've left a mark on us over the past number of years, mm -hmm. this will be their chance to leave it all on the field. And, Sign off with their very best performances, and if that if that alone, along with the uh, the possibility of life altering injuries on the gridiron, uh, if that doesn't bring you to the games, huh, I don't know what will. Uh, you you got to be real excited about this playoffs that we got coming up here. Well, that's a that's a great. A great testament and a great and a great uh, a great message to send out there and a great advertisement for South Tucson youth football. Thank you so much, Braden. Uh, can, we, some, can somebody can, can one of our interns just kind of yeah, help out the door? That's...
Deuce. <laughs> yeah, he's not like these. Not, no, not like these playoff games though. Those those smell delicious. Those smell oh. like those fucking like uh, like those like very pastry like candles. That, uh, like the uh, the white barn or like the Bed Bath and Body Works. Yeah, oh, like cinnamon yeah. roll candles. Oh yeah, goodness yeah those. Yeah, well, there you have it. There are our, um, you know, I, I, I think that's gonna that's gonna do it for us. Uh, I'll go ahead and just say, you know, RJ, get, uh, I'll give you a second to look at the bracket. I'll give you my prediction as well. I want you to tell me what's your final and who's your predicted champion. Uh, if you think it's gonna be chalk, if you think it's gonna be some upsets in the making, I personally, I'm looking at this. I think we are going to see, I think we just might see Rancho Robusto do it and have the one seed win it again, just like we did last year with the Marmalade Shack, but I think they might do it over CTE in the finals. That's my prediction right there. You know, that's a, uh, that's a good pick, but I, but I, I got to agree with you that I think it'll be, uh, that I think it'll be the same two teams, but I think Crest Zone Trampoline Experience. Uh, will just jump and bounce and slam their way to the top in in this South Tucson playoff. Well, I think it's whatever it is, it's going to be great. There's 11 exciting games of football to be played in the next four weeks. We'll see you on Sunday for the first round games, Sunday at 1 p.m. Eastern time, 10 a.m. on the West Coast. Until then, for RJ... My name is Brian Hughes. So long, Arizona. Imagine Dragons couldn't afford us. We could. It's not that we couldn't afford them. They couldn't afford us.